back muscles are superficial, intermediate and deep. The deep muscles are intrinsic and good posture they keep. Superficial and intermediate back muscles work is not lax. They're extrinsic and stabilize the vertebrae and thorax. The superficial ones originate from your vertebrae and attach to shoulder bones, humerus, clavicles, scapulae. They include the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi, as well as the rhomboids and the levator scapulae. The trapezius runs from your neck down along your back. Its three portions form a trapezoid which we will unpack. The scapula is lifted and rotated by upper fibers, retracted by middle fibers and lowered by lower fibers. Moving the arm, the latissimus dorsi's origins are numerous. It converges on a tendon that attaches to the humerus. From four cervical vertebrae, the levator scapula originates, attaching to the medial border of the scapula, which it elevates. The rhomboids retract and rotate the scapula on request. The minors above the major, remember for your test. The intermediate group has serratus posterior inferior, as well as the serratus posterior superior. Serratus posterior inferior moves part of the rib cage. It depresses ribs 9 to 12 when it is engaged. Elevating ribs 2 to 5 is the superior muscle's action. And these muscles might have slight respiratory function. Deep muscles together run from the sacrum to the skull's base. Help with vertebral column movement and keep posture in place. They're covered by fascia, which for organization is key. In two superficial, intermediate, and deep layers three. Two superficial, deep muscles, splenius, capitus, and cervicus, assist head and neck movement and form spinal transversalis. The splenius muscles can rotate the head to the same side. Together these muscles extension to the head and neck provide. The intermediate, deep muscles of the back number three. Iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis, as you can see. Together they form a column called the erector spinae between the ribs costal angle and the vertebrae. These three act unilaterally to laterally flex the vertebrae and act bilaterally to extend the head and vertebrae. The iliocostalis is located within the erector spinae. The lumbarum thoracis cervicis form this array. The longissimus is the largest of the three columns. Thoracic service is capitis, are three parts of its sum. Spinalis is found medially within the erector spinae. Of the three muscle columns, it's the smallest, okay. It's the column nearest to the spine and has three divisions. Thoracic service is capitis, as known by all physicians. The short muscles of the deep layer are under the erector spinae. Connected to the transverse and spinous processes of the vertebrae. This group is collectively known as transversospinalis. Its major muscles are semispinalis, multifidus, rotatorus. The most superficial, deep, intrinsic muscles are semispinalis. Divided by superior attachments into thoracic surfaces capitis. Running from the occipital bone to the tenth thoracic vertebra. To extend and contralaterally rotate the head and vertebrae. Multifidus stabilizes the... Vertebrae from under semispinalis. They're the thickest muscles in the transversospinalis. It's divided into the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar multifidus. They extend laterally, flex, and rotate the vertebral column. Thus, most prominently seen in the thoracic region is the rotatoris, whose origins are at the vertebral transverse processes. Two lamina and spinous processes of the vertebrae above it attaches Its high density of proprioceptors, postural control signals dispatches Lastly, there are a few more back muscles to mention Some minor deep intrinsic muscles that also need attention Interspinalis, intertransversari, levatoris costarum Interspinalis, intertransversari, stabilize the vertebral column Interspinalis spans between adjacent spinous processes Intertransversari spans between adjacent Adjacent transverse processes. Levatoris costarum runs from C7 to T11 to ribs below, and it serves to elevate the ribs. Review that just so you know. The anatomical illustrations you saw throughout this video were provided by our sponsor, KenHub. These beautiful illustrations speak for themselves. They're some of the most detailed and precise you can find on the internet.
In addition to thousands of high-resolution Atlas images like these, they have over 700 articles, over 500 practice quizzes and question banks, and over 100 hours of video material. KenHub is one of our favorite resources for learning anatomy online. Check them out in the link in the description.